I know I shouldn't have done my original review in 4K. The review that you'll never see. Probably because I reveal too much stuff about myself. But um, my belief about this um, movie is that uh, it doesn't feel like it's the true story. It feels like uh, we're being fed what they want us to uh, to believe. You know, because for, for instance, it starts off um, make it starts off too perfect. You just don't feel you don't get a feeling for struggle in that there wasn't enough of a struggle. The struggle is somewhere in the center. The struggle is is in where it comes in contact with the band. You get the feeling that the band is keeping stuff from you. They're like the only people that have is the only people that have anything to say in this is the is the lady that Mercury was with and uh and the band members. And as long as these band members have been without Freddie and been hanging on, they're they're willing to say anything at this point. If they can get some more money out of this. You know, if they did this without getting money from the from the whole thing, you know, people just did this without any money. If they made a thing that they're going to be true to the story a hundred percent to the point where they're they're going to take all the money and give it to charity, I would I would probably have it would it would have taken a different turn, but I have a feeling they're trying to get all the money they can out of this. I don't trust people who want money, because when they want money, they're willing to do anything to to satisfy to get you to be satisfied with whatever it is they're to present, and I get that feeling out of this movie. That a lot of it was just clever cleverness here and there. They're trying to keep make things clever all the way, and that cleverness uh, just says to me, "This is this is constructed. This whole thing feels constructed." But you know, it answers some questions that I had. Being a Queen fan uh, when I was, I got the game and I listened to that album a lot more than I think I listened to any of the Queen. Albums. It was the only one I ever bought myself, um, and that was a surprising album. You know, that the what they did with that album. You know, that's the great thing about their music is that um, you're not get you not you don't really know the story behind them behind any of it, and you don't understand how they were able to create such fantastic works. And uh, there's little bits and pieces of the story. They did give you a little truth here and there, but you don't you don't feel it doesn't feel like it was true, like a hundred percent true. It feels like it's they they've had some stuff that they didn't have they could say, some stuff that they could say, but they they're trying to they're trying to paint a, a pretty picture of somebody that they have great respect for but they don't want to they don't want to tarnish they, they can't afford to tarnish they can't afford to tell it wrong and there's going to be some stuff in there that's really not very pretty that nobody want, would want to know you know there's going to be dirt that's going to be dug up out of the story um, it's just, it just doesn't feel right, you know. A lot of stories, with me, a lot of stories that way, I, there are very few stories to me that feel right, that, that don't feel like they've been manipulated with. I don't, I don't, I don't, I refuse to be manipulated as a as a consumer, as a uh, as someone who uh, listens to stuff, and you know, after you've had enough, if you after you've watched enough movies, especially about bands and things of that nature, very few things can get past you that that you don't feel like there's something wrong with it, you know. Um, 
so that if it had been, you know, I just, I, I just don't believe it. But um, I think it's good that everybody is adopting Queen. Now they're starting to say, no, this is fantastic. This Bohemian Rhapsody, and, you know, it came, it, it was the perfect thing for them and the way they did it, you know, nobody could do it better and blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. You know, true. You know, everybody, there was nobody like Queen that could produce what they produced. You know, there you, nobody really compares to them. And, uh, Maybe maybe Prince. Prince, maybe Prince would, would compare. Because he's the only guy that I can think of, uh, you know, from the 80s that was anything in the nature of what Queen was. Elton, uh, Elton John is kind of like Queen, you know. Each one of these musicians have a story to tell. It's just that Queen are the guys that really stand out just because of of the attitude that Freddie had when he was on stage. But you don't know how much of that attitude carried on into his real life. And that's part of the reason why it's kind of unbelievable is that you don't know how much of Freddie passed on over from the stage on into his real life. Because the thing about stage performances or about, uh, about music people on stage is they, the stage performer um this is true for a lot of guys it's true for bowie bowie is kind of big for this the person that you're on stage was like a cartoon character of the person you are you know and it, it's not it's what you see on stage is the person you want to be the person you are in real life is not anywhere near your Superman persona that you have on stage. And uh, my my Superman persona is not anything near what I, what I tell people. I'll tell you right here. When I got the Alias Wayfront Award, it wasn't from uh, for, for being uh, really good in computer graphics. It was because I got in there when somebody was getting kicked out of their job position and somebody came in new and they were just eager to find people to fill the niche and they just picked the first person they found off the heap of, of cards and that satisfied what they needed to fill the position, you know. And they were looking for somebody that had only two years in a college program to what animation they were able to produce. And I was just telling them I'd been in the college program program. I'm in my second year of my credited college, but it wasn't, I was in my like fifth or sixth year of a credit of a, of a, of a, um, of a, um, program that was supposed to be a four year program. And it was taking me eight, 10 years to do. And so I was halfway through that. It was five years into it. And I was, in the length of time I've been spent on animation wasn't two years. I've, I've been doing computer graphics ever since I was 17. And when they were brought, when they were trying to find people to satisfy their scholarship program, which is where this money was coming from, um, I was about 25 whenever I got into it. And I had already been doing computer graphics for a long time. And so it was really, you know, they looked at me and they looked at all their other two year people, maybe, and they didn't find anybody that was like me. There's another thing about me is I was a computer science, I had a computer science background, I knew how to program. And, uh, and I could take any really complex program and uh, exploit it. So there was like the only, I was like probably the only guy from the way, Wavefront uh, circle that was making use of Wavefront, whereas they had lots of people doing Alias. 
that their graphics were turning out more fantastic than mine. So what I was doing with what I was doing it was probably what impressed them. I don't know. I would say what impressed me about my own self whenever I did that animation was that I had no animation background. It still looked pretty good um, for my position. But when I didn't do well getting a job doing it, you know, I couldn't understand why I couldn't get hired to do it. And I gave up on it. And I and instead of pushing my animation or whatever talent I have in computer graphics, instead of pushing that, my art, I pushed other people that I believed had a better chance of, of being successful. And that's the reason why I pushed Blender from the very beginning is that um I didn't want to I didn't want to be successful you know I didn't want to to put the, all the um that's that's me to a T is that I don't really want to put the effort into trying to have um to be big you know I don't want to risk it I would rather sit behind everything and let someone else do it and I would rather um I'd rather just push things you know into the limelight I know things are going to be big I get that feeling from VR that it's going to be big I want it to be big and uh if and and I need and I'm eager to find out what will make it work because it to me it feels like this is a fantastic um this is a fantastic medium and i've always believed in 3d graphics you know that what it can do 3d and the stereo sense 3d and the <coughs> the the media sense um 3D is truth. I it would have been great if uh, when when uh, all this was happening with Freddie, he had a VR camera the whole way through and been videotaping everything that happened to him, and then presented that to everybody because that's absolute truth. That's the reason why I'm videotaping this, and I'm really going to store my failures. And if people really want to know anything about my history which they probably but oh this this is probably all gonna go to the wayside, you know. This is gonna be dropped and and thrown thrown what around. But I'm just saying, you know, VR is hundred percent truth. And if I want anybody to know anything about me, they're gonna know the absolute truth and I'm gonna th present it to them. And I don't give a shit. I'll let everybody know everything about me till uh, they're, they don't want to know a damn thing about me, you know. I'll start another video up. Um, but I, I think the thing that's really pushing, uh, is going to push VR, is personal experience. It's going to be all of us telling our story and if it isn't us telling our story, it's going to be us presenting our story, being our story, showing our story, giving people the story. You know, it's the ultimate. It's the ultimate medium for storytelling. It's a hundred percent unfiltered storytelling. You can't fuck people over with VR. VR is a hundred percent truth. I mean, if it goes unedited and you're sitting there in front of a VR camera, you can't go back and edit that shit. You know, it doesn't work in stereo. Stereo, you can't manipulate stereo. That's the reason why it fucking scares everybody in Hollywood. Well, they won't even touch it. And why in Best Buy, they won't even, they'll throw all their headsets in a corner, in a, in a, in, in a cabinet. It's like who killed the electric car. Uh, if you ever saw that uh, documentary, um, it's 
you get the feeling in the documentary that something was left out that wasn't said. That something scared the shit out of the car industry such that they would want to take the the electric car and throw it and have all of the uh, have all of the uh, cars impounded and compressed and and thrown away. Th that there's something about the electric car that doesn't. Um, that ruins the whole industry. And VR is, th is the same way. The only way this is going to be successful is if everybody and their dog is pushing it and that the industry can't do shit about it. You know, What's going to make VR fly is going to be um, people. People who do not have stake in VR. You know, it's going to be all of us. That's the only way it's going to fly. That's the reason why these guys are pushing it, is because they know it's absolute truth. And we need absolute truth right now. Because the way we are living as a country, we are being fed shit all the time, and we're taking it for truth. And that's because we're being easily manipulated, because the mediums that we rely upon are easily manipulated. This VR is impossible to manipulate. It's very hard to manipulate VR. The only thing you can manipulate is what's called context. You can take things out of context, but you can't manipulate the medium the way you can the 2D medium. And so they can't even use computer graphics to manipulate it, you know. It won't work. You need artificial intelligence to manipulate 3D. You know, you need a computer that has the capacity to 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 attempt to understand how the um, the non cognizant part of the mind works. You know, the part that you are not thinking with, the part that the brain just automatically does. The artificial intelligence needs to match that. And needs the capacity to fool that in manipulating uh, 3D space, and manipulating 2D content that's presented in 3D. You know, maybe I don't understand how easily uh, stereo information is easy to manipulate, but I don't get the feeling that it isn't easy to manipulate because I've seen really bad 3D content and I can see through it. You know, and I can just see that, uh, you know, the reason why 3D is so successful is that, or the reason why the 3D is such a great medium is that it, it requires part of your brain to figure out what's going on. And without your brain, 3D doesn't make any sense because it's, it's taking two images and it's using the brain to figure out what's missing. That's what stereo is, is it's your brain um, doing the best pattern matching you could possibly ever do. And the, what it naturally does anyhow, because it has to take two images and draw out of that meaning, you know. So VR is the capacity of our brain everybody's brain to to make sense out of two images and do we you know is it all if if it is going to be successful it's going to be the same for all of us it's going to be what we all see because because stereo imagery is reliant on people's brains ability to to um, understand uh, the world outside it's through your eyes that you're only able to really trust what goes on in the world and your brain is able to your brain's able to pull out information out of the world that you can't see, you know. But with VR, 
Everything you can think you can see can be satisfied. And anything you can see, um, if you've seen it in 3D, you've seen this complete question. You've, you, you know how to answer the question. You can answer the question in 3D in ways that you can't ever do in 2D. And that's the reason why the VR medium is so great, is it's so true. It's not about, um, it's not about, I think the thing is what they're trying to get away from with the VR is they're trying to get away from what people want it to be. They want it to be like another 2D medium. They want it to be the next step up from 2D medium. It is actually a 2D media killer because it is a step up. It does feel right. Um, it does have the potential to do a lot of great things. The thing is, is it's a new medium. And it ain't like 2D. It's like, um, it's more like in a way going backwards and another way going forwards. It's forwards in that it's, it's better than 2D. It's backwards in that it's not going to let you do with 2D what you thought you could do, that what you could do with 2D. All the tools that made 2D fantastic are going to be lost with 3D because you can't you can't apply them. You can't manipulate 3D like you can 2D. And that's what's the, going to be the game changer. And every and it's going to test everybody by fire. You know, everybody's going to be like. Um, like, I've got to make this work. You know, you look at Tom Cruise, he's going to have to be his own stuntman because of VR. Because you can't hide your camera crew. You can't um, intercut and throw in a stuntman and have it him look convincing as the original person. Whenever the resolution goes up, which it has with this medium, and when... You can see everything in the scene. It's it's harder to lie to people with medium. And because of that, he doesn't have any stunt people that he can rely on. The doubles are not going to help him. He's got to be the person that, he, that people think he is. He's got to be that 100% um, in his movie. So he has to be his own stuntman. Or at least he has to satisfy that our needs for this medium for it to be the way it is, that he's going to have to be what it is, and that is 100% true to his persona in the, in the stories. He's going to have to be that persona in real life in front of a VR camera. And if he can't do that, then he's not going to be successful. And that's the reason why he's turning into a friggin' stuntman. The stuntmen are the, going, to be the, going to be the stars of VR. The stars of VR are going to be the people that have really exciting lives. That they turn on that VR camera and you can see into a reality either you want to be a part of it or you don't want to be a part of it. But in some way, it's going to be so extreme that it's going to be beyond belief. And that are these are the people that are going to be the stars of VR, are going to be the people that are beyond belief, that or that, or that can present content in a way that it's unbelievable. It's going to be like a Ripley's Believe It or Not. In the, but it's going to be a presented. It's going to be people that have to be able to tell things in a VR context that's just unbelievable. You know, not that it's they it can't be believed, but because you can't imagine how it could be uh, manipulated, because VR can't be manipulated. You see, that's the thing. Is it? It's going to have to be somebody, whoever takes over this medium and makes it work. It's going to be like a, a like a, um, the guy pulling the sword from the stone. 
That's what they're doing. That's the reason why they're sitting around and they're just letting us do it and, and mess with the medium. They're looking for that person to pull the sword of the stone. What, who's going to be the killer app for the medium? I'm, I'm up in front and I'm saying, you're looking for that guy to pull the sword from the stone? I can't pull the sword from the stone, but I can tell you nobody's going to be able to pull the sword from the stone because everybody is the answer. It's going to be the person we're all together going to pull the sword from the stone. No single person is going to do it. This is a medium that is going to be successful because everybody is involved. And those are the people that need to be involved. And you're not going to find it by everybody coming into the medium and uh, holding events and setting up, you know, with all space VR. Um, the thing that's attractive about it is, is that anybody can get up and, and be um, VR, be the VR star, because they don't know what the VR star is going to be. They have no clue, and, and anybody is, has the capacity to be the VR star here. So, and I, I'm answering it to some degree by putting out videos like this one to try to get people to understand that everybody is the VR star. It isn't me. It isn't, you know, it isn't who you think it is. It's someone is going to step out of the shadows and, and it's going to be the VR star. And that's going to be the person that has so much dimension to them that they've, they've lived a crazy life. And I haven't really lived that crazy a life. I've been, the way I've lived my life mostly is just avoiding things, you know, all my life. I've just been avoiding uh, taking front seat to anything. And I'm just, will not be manipulated. So maybe that's, maybe that will, is the, the essence of, of the, how I believe that I have anything to do with this medium is that um, just as it is not easily manipulated as a medium, it needs people um, creating content for it that are not easily manipulated. You know, because that's the only way, because you can't manipulate this medium. So you have to sell, tell the absolute truth of whatever it is that you are. And it has that, that capacity to completely reveal you. And that's what scares the shit out of every celebrity and every filmographer and every business is that VR exposes all the shit that they don't want people to know. It will expose everything. And uh, everybody takes a risk coming into VR. And using it as a as a medium, it has the potential to do a lot in the in the CG world. The three D graphics game world is probably the easiest world to develop for VR because um, it's easily manipulated. CG is going to be easily manipulated in three D because there's nothing to it. You know, it's just two D with an extra camera. If you need to re-render a 3D film, you can do it with multiple points of view very easily. You can make it interactive. You can do anything in the CG world. The, the C, VR and CG is, is to VR what, uh, you know, it's the perfect marriage for VR to have coded content, um, math, mathematically perfect content, story-wise perfect content, content that's easily, um, that's not easy to, to make, but is easy to, to assimilate and uh, to recognize things that are easy to identify with.
Okay, sorry, I'm falling asleep. I'm going to uh, restart this whole thing. <coughs> Let me get back in my app. Okay, we'll see where it's at. It stopped. 